In 2010, paleoanthropologists discovered a small pinky bone in Denisova Cave in the Siberian Alti Mountains. When this bone was sequenced, scientists realized that it belonged to a species closely related to both Neanderthals and humans. Since this initial discovery, we've learned quite a bit about our ancient cousins. In fact, through popular media, they have become as well known as Neanderthals. And many have the impression that we know as much about the Denisovans as we know about the Neanderthals. But this simply isn't true. The real truth about the Denisovans is we really don't know much about them. You see, when new science emerges, mainstream media and popular science has a tendency of oversimplifying and speculating. I want to move beyond the simple narrative of the Denisovans using all available evidence to see what we actually know about our mysterious cousins. While researching this subject, I was surprised to find some information that isn't often talked about. But before I go there, I want to start with something that popular media has jumped all over. The truth is, we don't know what the Denisovans look like. In fact, the only physical evidence we have of the Denisovans comes from one finger bone, three molars, one arm or leg bone, a piece of skull, and one mandible. This offers very little clues as to what the Denisovans look like. The majority of what we know about the Denisovans has been inferred through genetic analysis. In 2019, a research paper was released in the journal Cell. David Gockman and his collaborators claimed that by analyzing Denisovan DNA and the methylation markers, aka epigenetic markers, contained in the DNA, they were able to infer the anatomical structure of the Denisovan skeleton. When this study was released in pop media, it was most often released alongside an artistic depiction of a Denisovan. This gave the general population the false impression that scientists were able to reconstruct the face of this particular Denisovan. This research should be taken with a grain of salt. A major tenet of science is that an experiment is able to be replicated, to be proven or disproven. But these researchers don't even have a skeleton to prove themselves right. In his blog, paleoanthropologist and geneticist John Hawkes voices his skepticism by saying, quote, I'm a skeptic about this paper. The authors follow an approach that has not been shown to predict the morphology of any living humans or any other species, end quote. He goes on to point to a second research paper that attempted to use these techniques in living monkeys. The results of that paper argued that reading epigenetic markers showed little predictive value when it came to inferring anatomical structure. Okay, so we don't know what the Denisovans look like. What else don't we know about them? The truth is, referring to the species as Denisovans is probably itself flawed. At this point, I'm going to attempt to convince you that the Denisovans are probably actually three species. When I say species, I'm referring to the current classification of hominid populations. Lately, it has become popular to assert that because Homo sapiens, Neanderthalensis, and Denisovans all interbred and swap DNA, that they should be considered one species. The problem with this assertion is that the genome tells a different story. When researchers analyze the genomes of human DNA, they find that the hybrid male offspring were more than likely sterile. This same effect is seen when other species produce hybrid offspring. This should tell us that the modern humans, Neanderthals, and Denisovans are at the very least subspecies, but most probably distinct species. It's estimated that modern humans and Neanderthals split from their last common ancestor anywhere between 500,000 and 700,000 years ago. 
These dates are highly contested between both different genetic studies and also between geneticists and paleoanthropologists who obtain dates from the fossil evidence. However, regardless of the absolute year that the genetic models end up lining up with, they can still tell us about relative values between Neanderthals, humans, and Denisophans. For example, a study by geneticists Alan Rogers, Ryan Bolander, and Chad Huff shows that after modern humans and Neanderthals split from their last common ancestors, Denisophans split from Neanderthals almost immediately after about 300 generations. To put this into perspective, let's be conservative and pretend that Neanderthals had their first child at 35 years old. If you multiply 35 times 300, you get 10,500 years. The generation gap in both modern humans and Neanderthals is smaller than 35 years. This means that Denisovans split from Neanderthals only 10,000 years after the Denisovan-Neanderthal lineage split from the modern human lineage. In evolutionary terms, that's a blink of an eye. I'm going to refer to that initial Denisovan split as D0. Now that we got all the background information out of the way, let's get into some of the juicier stuff. In 2016, Anasafo Malaspinas and her colleagues released a research paper entitled A Genomic History of Aboriginal Australia. The authors state that they found about 4% admixture with a quote, Denisovan related population that diverged about 400,000 years ago from Alti Denisovan. They went on to say that this population was likely very different from the Alti Denisovan in Russia. So that was the first clue that there's something more to quote unquote Denisovans. That research was released in 2016. I want to jump to something a little more recent where scientist Guy Jacobs and colleagues take it a step further. By analyzing the DNA of 14 different island groups around Southeast Asia, along with East Asians, the scientists generated really interesting results. They not only identified the mysterious population that Malaspinas and crew identified, but they found a second ghost population. Let's take a second to recap. The Russian population found in Denisova Cave, which I refer to as D0, is the original Denisovan population. Malaspinas identified a population that diverged from D0 about 400,000 years ago. Jacobs refined this date to about 363,000 years ago, and he referred to this population as D2. The second population that Jacobs found, D1, diverged from D0 about 283,000 years ago. So here we have three different populations, and all on the same Denisovan branch. Now this is a good time to point out, the evidence for our own species only goes back about 315,000 years, and we don't even consider that anatomically modern. Instead, we refer to it as archaic Homo sapiens. But if D2 split from the original population of Denisovans 363,000 years ago, are we still confident saying that D0 and D2 are the same species? And D1 split a little bit more recently, 283,000 years ago. But the date of quote-unquote anatomically modern humans was recently pushed back to only 230,000 years ago. Yet D1 split from D0 283,000 years ago. So if our own species can't be contained within 233,000 years, should we assume that these three populations of Denisophans are the same species? One split 363,000 years ago from the original population, while the other one split 283,000 years ago. Before we attempt to answer if they should be considered separate species, Let's look at where we find their genes in modern human populations. 
This may help us to infer where these distinct populations lived. D0 genes are found in East Asians, Siberians, Native Americans, and surprisingly, in Iceland. Icelanders have higher than expected Denisovan heritage. It is currently not known why this is. The two most likely scenarios include a Denisovan encounter before the Icelandic ancestors migrated to Iceland, or an encounter with Neanderthals resulted in an indirect transfer of Denisovan genes. The current known distribution of Denisovan genes makes it unlikely that Denisovans were in Iceland just as it is unlikely that they were in North America and encountered Native Americans. To date, the genes of the D1 population are only found on the combined island of Papua Indonesia and Papua New Guinea. The genetic remnants of the D2 population have a much wider distribution. They are found throughout South Asia and Oceania, including the Philippines. Let's step back and think about these regions for a minute. The Alti Denisovan genes, D0, are found in the cooler regions of modern day Russia and North Asia. D2 genes are dispersed across the warmer region of South Asia, the Isles of Southeast Asia, including the Philippines. It appears that the D1 population was only ever encountered on the tropical isle of Papua New Guinea. So population D0 resides in a generally cold environment, while D1 and D2 populations live in a much more temperate environment. At the very least, it could be argued that the contrasting cool environment of D0 relative to the warmer tropical environments of D1 and D2 resulted in at least two different species or subspecies of Denisovans. That is to say that a cold weather adapted Denisovan and a warm weather adapted Denisovan population evolved. And if you now consider the deep divergent time between D1 and D2, about 363,000 years, it is also likely that they evolved distinctive phenotypic traits to match their genetic distinction. And this is why I'm arguing that as we gather more genetic and fossil evidence, we will view these three Denisovan populations as different from each other as we are from Neanderthals. But looking at the Denisovan gene distribution in modern humans doesn't necessarily show us the actual home range of these populations. We do have fossil evidence of the D0 Denisovans. Their remains have been found in Denisova Cave in Russia and in the Chinese Baisha Cave on the Tibetan Plateau. We currently have no confirmed physical remains of the D1 or D2 populations. Although already discovered remains may turn out to be Denisovan. To attempt to locate the home range of D1 and D2 populations, let's look at a study by researcher Maximilian Lorena and colleagues. In this 2021 paper, Lorena and colleagues described the results of their genomic analysis of indigenous Filipinos known as the Aita. First, they found that the Aita had their own interbreeding event with Denisovans. Not only that, but they found that the Aita and the Aita Mangbukan specifically shared about 24% more Denisovan ancestry than Papuans. And the Papuans themselves possess more Denisovan ancestry than Australian Aborigines. Just as interesting, the researchers state that the Denisovan population that interbred with the indigenous Filipinos is not the same population that interbred with the Papuans, or D1. Because the D2 population appears to have a large presence throughout Oceania, they are likely responsible for this interbreeding event with indigenous Filipinos. Because we have no confirmed physical evidence for the D1 and D2 populations, we have to infer using genetic data within modern humans. And to try to pinpoint the locations of these two populations, we're going to need to rewind the clock a little bit and look at human migrations into the area. 
you should consider all the dates I'm about to use as approximate. They can and are likely to change as new evidence becomes available. About 70,000 years ago, the population that all modern humans descend from left Africa. The prevailing theory is that they left across the Arabian Peninsula. A portion of this group split off from the rest and headed towards Sundaland. This group is the ancestors of the modern-day Australia Aborigines, Papua New Guineans, and the indigenous Filipino Aitas. The genetic data tells us that this group reached the Sunda supercontinent about 51,000 years ago. And they almost immediately encountered and interbred with D2 Denisofen individuals. At this point, the group splintered, with one branch going up into the Philippines and the other continuing on to the Sahul supercontinent. This would remain the situation until about 37,000 years ago, when the Sahul population once again split with some of this group remaining in Papua New Guinea permanently. The continent itself was still intact, but rising water transformed the land between Papua New Guinea and Australia from a vast plains and grassland to a structure that saw a large lake form in the middle of this grassland, which left smaller strips to connect the island to Australia. About 30,000 years ago, two events occurred. The people of Papua New Guinea interbred with Denisovans, but this time with the D1 population. And the genomic analysis of the indigenous Filipinos indicates that they interbred with the D2 population. By 14,500 years ago, the island of Papua New Guinea and Australia became permanently isolated due to rising sea levels. For the next 14,500 years, the sea level would continue to rise, resulting in a familiar geography. Let's step back a moment and take this all in and try to understand what it means. We know that the presence of Denisovan genes in modern day populations doesn't necessarily mean that the modern day location of that population is the location where interbreeding occurred. But we have very strong evidence where at least three admixing events occurred. We know that almost immediately after entering Sunda or possibly Sahul, the population split into Sahulans and indigenous Filipinos. But we also know that immediately preceding this, there was an admixture event with D2 Denisovan. This means that 50,000 years ago, there was at least one D2 Denisovan population in Sunda or Sahul. We also know that about 30,000 years ago, indigenous Filipinos admixed once again with the D2 Denisovan population. This is also a strong indicator that the D2 population of Denisovans was physically in the Philippines 30,000 years ago. Simultaneously, there was a D1 Denisovan admixing event in Papua New Guinea. And to date, this is the only genetic signal ever found for a D1 Denisovan population. Some data even suggest that they lived until about 14,500 years ago. It's a good bet that the last Denisovans were on one of these islands. I want to point out that most of what we know about them is through DNA analysis. And when you think about this, this is counter to how we know about most other hominid species. For example, Australopithecus afarensis, Homo habilis, Homo erectus, Homo naledi, and until recently, Neanderthals were all known only through their bones and fossil evidence and the analysis of such material. This might lead to some intriguing possibilities. For example, who's to say we haven't already found fossil evidence of at least one of these Denisofen populations, but have it labeled as a different species? John Hawkes discusses this possibility on a recent episode of Razib Khan's Unsupervised Learning podcast. 
if you can, if you think, wow, there must have been Denisovans in um, in Sundaland because you know they their unique Denisovan components show up in Sahul, and so you've got these, you know, there must have been a divergent population, and it must have been somewhere. Um, let's say it was in Java. You know what the fossils in Java look like? They look like the terminus of a long-lasting Erectus-like lineage, and and that's 100,000 years ago. So, okay, are the Denisovans this? And if they are, well, wait a minute. You know, how do they end up looking so much like the Erectuses that are there 800,000, a million years ago? And if you look at the fossil record of those places, I mean, ultimately, these populations are going to line up with the fossil record in some way. It could line up that the genetics we're finding is just of populations that the fossil record isn't representing. That could happen. but if it does happen, then we're multiplying entities yet further. <laughs> so, after a review of the evidence, what does this all mean? Well, there's little verified physical evidence of the Denisovans, and our attempts at Denisovan phenotypic reconstruction are experimental at best. But direct DNA evidence does tell us when the Denisovans and Neanderthals split. And it also tells us that their split from each other wasn't long after their lineage split from ours. Analyzing the remnants of Denisovan DNA in modern human populations has allowed us to approximate their maximum range of these three Denisovan lineages. It has also allowed us to pinpoint three locations where Denisovans likely lived and possibly the last place any of these three lineages lived before departing Earth for good. Anthropologist Chris Stringer mentioned the newly established Homo longi is possibly Denisovan. John Hawkes talked about Java Homo erectus being a possible Denisovan candidate. And in his 2021 research paper analyzing indigenous Filipino DNA, genetic biologist Maximilian Lorena also points out the fact that the relationships between Homo luzonensis and Homo floresiensis and Denisovans are unknown. This naturally leads to the question, are the D1 and D2 Denisovan lineages dwarfed versions of D0? After all, the hobbit-sized Homo luzonensis was located on a modern-day Filipino island. And the fossil remains of Homo floresiensis were found in Java, the heart of Sundaland. Many paleoanthropologists would likely disagree and point out that many of the morphological traits that Homo floresiensis and Homo luzonensis possess appear to predate Neanderthals and Denisovans and possibly even Homo erectus. So, what's the truth about the Denisovans? The truth is, even with the wealth of data DNA has given us, when it comes to the Denisovans, there is so much yet to be discovered.